All right. How was how was it's it? post how time. It? It's post time. Wonderful. Thank you, Council Ganasso. Uh, good evening and welcome to the Monday, uh, March 15th zoning subcommittee. Tonight we have only one item on the agenda and um, I just wanted to kind of open it up with a little bit of a, uh, of a initiative of the meeting, but also to talk about some of the things that we're going to discuss and um, also recognizing that I know that there's a lot of, uh, there are a lot of uh, people that are, uh, have, have comments that they may want to make and or some people that want to put, have some input. Certainly everyone will be given a chance, to, an opportunity to speak. I will ask that you keep your comments brief and um, we use the, for the uh, participants, uh, a three minute um, time, time limit uh, will be enforced with the number of attendees that we expect tonight. But one of the biggest points is to bring out the initiative of this meeting. We had a full zoning subcommittee last week and uh, it, you know, it wasn't for the, any real true are large issues with this proposal. It was more so that I did not feel that there was enough time to discuss um, some of the slight concerns that may have and didn't wanna make it feel as if it was rushed. So I thought that this, uh, this, this, uh, this parcel or this piece of zoning and overlay needed some more time to discuss so that we can all be sure to be heard and to make sure people are hearing us. Uh, over this entire process of the zoning overlay, there have been a number of meetings. There was um, upwards of six or seven community-based meetings uh, for the Riverfront Master Plan that was well attended. The, the committee uh, had many members on it um, outside of the city council. We had city employees and we had a lot of community members that were involved. It was very fruitful. It was well advertised. It was well publicized. It was on Revere TV. It was also off on Zoom and uh, it, was, it was offered in those many facets. Um, so I think that from the get-go, this process, and sometimes we can be critical of the process, has been very, very good. But again, there's always going to be more questions. So uh, to open up in tonight's meeting, I just wanted to make sure that everyone has understood that there was, this couldn't have been more transparent. And uh, I do appreciate that. Some of the concerns that some of the councils did express, Council of Visconti, myself, Council Serino, um, had a few hesitations. Uh, we have worked all week with uh, Bob O'Brien and his team on some of the concerns that we did have. And also, uh, while we were addressing those concerns, we did get a number of um, messages from community members that were really important to us. And it was, it was good to see that the concerns that we initially had and some of the, the items that we were working on were some of the same concerns that uh, residents had re reached out to us on. So uh, even beforehand, we were, we were already working on those from the get-go from last Monday night. So I think that uh, we have some... Um, some different uh, language that we would like to invite and offer up as uh, resolutions and some slight amendments to the current proposal. And when we are able to put all that language in properly, that would then go forward um, at some point to the full city council. But just a reminder, this is the zoning subcommittee um, and it still needs to go in front of the entire city council to be fully adopted. With that being said, I'd like to open it up and uh, I know on the project uh, from the city side. I know uh, Mr. O'Brien did want to talk briefly about some of those, um, some of the wording adjustments and some of the adjustments that we've worked on and give a, a little bit of a breakdown. So Bob O'Brien, if you care to speak. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, my name is, as you say, Bob O'Brien. I live at 10 Ocean Avenue in Revere and for the past five years, I've been chief of planning and development Relative to this issue, the moderator advisory group for the, well, excuse me, my muting is not working here properly. Advisory uh, group for. Bob, hang on, if you can just stop for a second, you're going on and off of mute. I noticed that. I'm clicking on mute, but for some reason it's not working properly. Just don't but okay. anymore, just keep talking. How's that? Okay. Uh, in any event, as I was saying, in addition to being the uh, Director of Planning and Development for the City of Revere. I was the moderator of the Development Advisory Group for the Riverfront Master Plan process. Um, and I welcome this opportunity to speak to the Zoning Overlay District proposal, which is before you, and particularly the resolutions which have been developed since the last meeting. Uh, I also would like to speak to uh, the very legitimate issues raised in the March 12th letter from a number of community members uh, 
that I received on uh, early Saturday morning. Um, I think it raises a number of very legitimate issues, uh, issues which uh, were discussed to some extent in the master planning process, but clearly were not fully resolved and in some cases cannot yet be fully resolved. Uh, but all of which I think need in the final analysis to be addressed and finally resolved, as we all agreed. As the letter itself says, at a minimum, all of these issues should become a part of an orderly timeline that should be held to a schedule and be closely monitored for compliance. I and I think the members of the zoning subcommittee agree completely uh, with that. And I think it was clear from the discussion at the initial subcommittee meeting a week ago that not only were people not satisfied that all of the issues would be addressed in a timely fashion, but particularly that the public sector portions of the master plan uh, might not keep pace with the private sector. I think the two resolutions which have now been crafted as a result of our consultation with uh, the chairman and members of the zoning subcommittee address these matters. But um, I, I would just like to put into context what the zoning overlay district is and what it is not and what it does and, and what it does not. And I would reference the master plan itself. Um, all of the members of the, the signatories on that letter, uh, I know for the most part, and many of them worked uh, as members of the development advisor group on the master planning process. And um, I very much respect all of their input. Uh, I think everyone agrees as the letter of March 12th indicates that the master plan itself was a rather remarkable document. And as the chairman has indicated, it was a transparent and very effective process. In that master plan itself, there was a chapter devoted to next steps. And we were quite explicit in what those next steps would be. There were in fact 13 of them. The four initial next steps involved the redevelopment of the GNJ site. And I just wanna take us through where we are in that process so we understand what the purpose of the zoning overlay district is. The first step was in fact to prepare a zoning overlay district, the uh, zoning overlay plan that would allow for the kind of development of the GNJ site that was contemplated in the master plan. The current zoning for the GNJ site does not allow for the kind of development that we had discussed, particularly for the residential and mixed use development that we had discussed. And it was clear from the outset and discussed in great detail in the master planning process that we would have to create an overlay district to allow for that. Frank Stringy, in fact, prepared such an overlay district, which is what is now before us. The overlay district allows for a project that is consistent with the master plan. In fact, in this case, it specifically allows for a project that is similar in height to the development along the waterfront in recent years, far smaller, far less tall than what had been done in the past, St. George and the Carabetta buildings in particular. But in this case, it called for a much lower density than has been the case in any of the waterfront districts uh, developments thus far. Um, and I think that is primarily the, the goal of the overlay district. It also called for a number of significant community contributions, financial and otherwise, which uh, I think are, are quite notable. Uh, but the overlay district does not involve the specificities of project architecture, unit count, unit mix, any of those things. All of those are addressed when a project comes forward. We do not officially have a project yet. The zoning overlay district allows for a project. Redgate clearly has expressed their interest in coming forward with this proposal, but they cannot and will do so un, uh, unless the the use and dimensions that are currently not allowed will be, allow them to come forward with that district. So Frank has composed what I think is a quite uh, reasonable and comprehensive overlay district, which allows us to move forward to the next 
step in the master planning process. The second Next step was for the planning board, the Revere planning board to adopt the overlay district. That in fact was done on February 9th after a public hearing uh, at which a considerable amount of support was evidenced and no opposition was uh, reported. And that plan was unanimously adopted by the, Re the Revere planning board. The, the third step in the process was for the Revere Planning Board and the City Council to adopt the proposed overlay district. And that is where we are now. Um, approving the overlay district does not in any way approve any particular plan because we don't yet have a plan and can't until the overlay district is approved. But we have had public hearings at both the Revere Planning Board and at the City Council on the proposed overlay district. And at none of them was there any opposition expressed. That is not to suggest that there are not questions that need to be answered, but the Revere Planning Board after its public hearing has now recommended that the City Council adopt the overlay district, which has been proposed. The fourth step in the process is to engage in the permitting of whatever pro project does come forward. Now that is in this case going to be a very extensive process, not only at the local level, but also at the state and federal level. This is a waterfront project that will require not only site plan review approval, but also will require the Revere Conservation Commission to review and approve it. At the state level, it will require a full MEPA review as well as uh, DEP and CZM approval. And at the federal level, the Army Corps of Engineers is going to be involved. So it is absolutely clear that in all of those planning processes and all of those permitting processes, all of the questions that have been outlined in the March 12th letter, not only can be addressed and resolved, but will be. But we are not yet at that point. We are only at the point of allowing for um, a project to come forward for the approval in general and not project specific terms of a project that is consistent with the master plan. And that is what we are asking the city council and the planning board to approve. The planning board has already done so. The city council is now uh, doing so. Uh, I, I might add that we understand, and this has been discussed in the master planning process itself, that there is a specific project plan that is now being developed. At the time of the master plan, it was only at the conceptual stage and a lot of questions that were asked about it were not yet ready to be answered. Since the master plan was approved, Redgate has come forward with a more refined plan which we do believe needs to be shared with the community before it is presented for review by the Site Plan Review Committee or by the um, Revere Conservation Commission. And in fact, the, the uh, resolution before you amends the overlay district as now proposed to ensure that will be the case. Uh, I might just add a word about Redgate. Um, Redgate has had a lot of experience in our community and we have as a community a lot of experience uh, with Redgate. They have, this would be their, their fifth building in Revere. It represents a substantial amount of investment in the community, but also a substantial amount of uh, interest in the community and what the community has to offer. And we have had unfailingly positive relationships with Redgate. And it makes a great deal of difference to us that the proposal that will be coming forward pursuant to this zoning overlay district is from a developer who has the reputation for credibility and experience that Redgate has in our mind and I think in everyone's mind. I think everyone has agreed that the master plan was a good document. Everyone I also think agrees that Redgate is a good developer. And it's in that context that we are confident that the approval of the overlay district 
uh, will be a step in the direction of approving the master plan as a whole, which everyone wants. Now, there are a number of issues that were raised in the uh, March 12th letter that I think are, are worthy of response. And I just wanna go over a few of those quickly. One has to do with the effect of the overlay district. Does it in fact replace the current zoning? And the answer to that is not. An overlay district is in addition to the underlying current zoning for the purpose of encouraging kind of development that we want to occur. And it does not replace the underlying zoning, it overlays the underlying zoning. And if it is adopted, they must adopt all of the goals and restrictions of the overlay district, which is exactly what's going to happen here. There is a question raised about the inclusion of the Mirage site. Uh, we included the Mirage site in the Riverfront Overlay District to reflect what was clear from the master planning process that the community, the city and the developer wanted that site to be developed as a waterfront restaurant. Um, we understand from the March 12th letter that there is some question about whether or not that should be included. And if it is, if there's any question in the mind of the community, whether it should be, our preference would be not to include it. And in fact, we are now proposing that it not be included. Uh, question was raised about the, the timing of the overlay district versus the sale of the property since Redgate does not yet own the property. And that is true, they do not yet own the property, but the zoning overlay district and the approval and permitting of the project has to be done before the sale is completed because as with most major projects, the sale of the property is contingent on permitting. So there is a great deal of work that has to be done between now and the sale, which will has to occur before the end of 2021. And that also includes the need to relocate the, the current business, uh, which has to begin fairly soon. So we really need to approve the overlay district and begin the permitting process for the project now so that the, the sale of the property can be consummated. Um, the details of the project, many questions were raised about unit count, unit mix, architecture, siting of the building, etc. We agree that all of those issues need to be addressed with the community before they go to site plan review. And in fact, the, uh, one of the uh, resolutions before the subcommittee precisely calls for that. With regard to a few other issues, neighborhood residency, it was raised, will the, would the residents of the new project be considered residents of Point of Pines or the Riverside community? The answer to that is absolutely not, nor will they have any privileges that are accorded to those residents, including on-street parking privileges and or access to the Point of Pines Beach. None of those will be privileges or rights accorded to the tenants of this project. The roadway configuration, absolutely critical. We understand that, the developer understands that, and it is as important to the city and to the developer as it is to the community. It is, it is however, important also to have funding for these projects. And the funding is dependent on the relationship between the transportation improvements and the proposed development. MassWorks, which is the likely source of this uh, funding for this project for which application has already been made, requires that transportation improvements relate to ongoing economic development projects in the surrounding area. That is what the Riverfront Overlay District will allow. And if that kind of development is not allowed, it's going to be very difficult to get the kind of funding that we need to, to have that completely done before any of the development is occupied. And the Riverside Boat Works property, yes, that is also an issue which we understand needs to be approached. We are contemplating the purchase of that property uh, by the city of Revere. And that was what was discussed in the context of the master plan itself. But it is purchase of, of the property for a purpose. The purpose being the uh, community boating and North Shore maritime facility that is outlined and contemplated in the master plan itself. 
if that is not approved and the approval of the overlay district is an important step to approval of the or implementation of the master plan as a whole, it's very unlikely we will get the kind of money that we need to rehabilitate that. And if it is approved, we already have indication from the Seaport Economic Council that they will be very favorably disposed to supporting that effort. So the overlay district and the approval of this development is very much related to that. Finally, the Point of Pines fire station was raised as an issue. That is now fully funded. The demolition of that project, the existing fire station should commence within a few weeks. As soon as the construction drawings are completed, construction will begin. It should be completed within a year or so, well before anything is uh, occupied on this site, but it will be very important to service this site and the rest of the waterfront, including Point of Pines. So at this stage in the process, we really are at the point where the, the questions that need to be raised will be raised and addressed in the permitting process that will follow from the approval of the overlay district. And in that sense, the approval of the overlay district will both facilitate and expedite the response to those very legitimate questions, which we all want answered. The purpose of the, fine, of the uh, permitting process is precisely to answer those kinds of questions. Now, that does not, at this stage, eliminate all uncertainty, but at least it does address the question that was raised in the letter about how and when and where those questions will be, will be answered. So we think with the, the two resolutions that are now before the council, uh, which were composed, I might say, before we received uh, the letter of March 12th, but which the letter from March 12th, I think very much validates as to its relevance and timeliness. Uh, I, I think these two resolutions will achieve what clearly had not been achieved when this matter was discussed last week. That is to say, have specific uh, amendments to the council that will assure that there will be uh, review with the community of the all elements of the design before it goes to the overlay district, that there are no parking privileges or other privileges allowed to the residents of this project that otherwise are associated with the community, and that there will be, in addition, preference given in the uh, commercial uses related to this project to Revere residents. I think people can be, and, and also to restrict the uh, overlay district to the, the G and J property alone as has been requested. I think with these amendments, it will be an improved overlay district. And I think with the other resolution that outlines a very regular and specific reporting requirement uh, on a quarterly basis to the city council and to the community uh, that all of the concerns of the uh, residents as expressed on March 12th and otherwise uh, will be addressed in a systematic and predictable fashion uh, as we all want. So with that, I think we are at a much better place than we were last week. And I think uh, we very much respect and uh, thank the input uh, of the community members who penned the letter of uh, March 12th, which was very comprehensive and very thoughtful, but I think we have uh, now responded uh, to that. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I trust that you can proceed on that basis and I'm certainly available to answer any of your questions. Thank, or thank you, Bob. And I'm sure you will uh, be able to. Um, I did wanna uh, open it up to some of the counselors if, and also for the residents, we'll, we'll go sh shortly after. If you can just make sure everyone wants to speak, use the raise hand function. And uh, just a reminder to please uh, be, uh, use brevity. We'll be using the uh, three minute rule. And also um, just to enter, we, we did ask that that letter that was well written uh, was entered into the, be entered into the record. record. And uh, at the summation uh, of this, we'll go over some of the amendments that were come up through the zoning subcommittee in, 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 um, in reference to what Mr. O'Brien was talking about that will really help answer to a lot of the questions uh, that were raised and concerns that were raised by the residents and the neighbors of the area. So uh, going off the subcommittee first, we have Councilor, uh, Councilor Gonasso, I care to speak. Mr. Chairman. Yes, Councilor As was explained very thoroughly by uh, Bob O'Brien, 
our sole purpose this evening is, and the city council's sole purpose at this point in venture of this project is solely to create a area known as the overlay district for this for the river, riverfront overlay. In, in other words, just usage of the property. We're not we're not authorizing 260, 290 units. We're not authorizing any usage. We're just saying this is the possibility of what could occur in this property after we make this vote. So I think that although that uh, informative um, letter that we all received, the memo we all received, I think it was well put together, but there were questions in that which are vital concerns to the area that were addressed very adequately. And I think that now we as a community have to um, show the foresight. Do we want this kind of development in this area? That's our sole purpose this evening. It's not who's going to do it. It's not even a safeguard that Redgate's going to do it. You know, it's just given a, a permission for this usage to be occurred. And then the, ne the next steps go before set site plan review. And then you get to go before the conservation and MEPA and all the other agencies that will protect the neighborhood. They will protect the community of Revere. Of Revere. So there's a lot of safeguards already given in this. This isn't going to happen next week. This is a, a multi-year event. So I think our sole responsibility is to vote this out because we, I, for one individual on the subcommittee, think the usage is perfect. You couldn't get a better usage. So that's our, that's our, that's our challenge tonight. Nothing else. What's that land going to be used for? This is a good use. Thank so, you, Mr. John. Chairman, thank you for the levity of uh, the opportunity. I will be voting favorably to vote this out favorably this evening. Thank you, Council. And Council Serino. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'll be brief. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I want to thank you and uh, Mr. O'Brien, as well as Damien. I do certainly think that what we have before, before us tonight with regard to the resolution and the safeguards and the explanation is a lot better than what we had last Monday at this time. And I, I do, I, I congratulate you and thank you for that. Um, I unfortunately, I, I, I love my, my fellow counselor from Ward 3, but I, the way I see it is that, yes, we are creating the overlay district and we're not saying what, you know, we're not, we're not approving the units, um, but at some point that's probably what, what is going to happen there. And, all I can hear in my head are the voices of the doors that I knocked two years ago. And people in Ward 6, I know, have expressed, um, you know, when it comes to large scale residential development, they feel that we've, we've had our fair share. And um, again, I think that this proposal is, is great. And what we've, um, you know, what our subcommittee, the work that our subcommittee has done has been good. However, in good conscience, I personally just will not still be able uh, to vote for it. But again, I, I do think, I, I thank Damien uh, for talking with me last week and I, I do see where everybody is coming from. Uh, so I, I thank you, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Councilor. Uh, Councilor Visconti. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I wanna first thank my colleagues, uh, Councilor Serino and Councilor um, Keith. Um, for assisting in the resolution uh, that we put forth tonight. I think uh, working collaboratively with uh, Bob O'Brien, I think we were able to bring to the forefront um, legitimate concerns that we as counselors had, as well as residents. I also wanna thank the many conversations I had with the residents in that area. Your concerns are valid and they should be addressed. And I think that's what we're here doing tonight. Um, I will say the, the process has been informative to these last past couple of weeks. Um, I think if all goes according to plan, I think the Riverside and the Point of Pines community will have a designated area that will be like no other I think the master Riverside master plan will be a gem for the city of Revere. And while I still have concerns of the density of the 
residential component, I do feel that approving the overlay district is only one step of many steps needed for the developer to get the project approved. After multiple conversations with Damien, as reassured and is committed to making sure this proposal project is even more inclusive and transparent to our community than it already has. And that's important. And up to this point, he has been a good partner for the city of Revere. The success of his project relies heavily on the fact that the Riverside Master Plan gets implemented. He has stated that and has emphasized that. So I am in favor, I will be supporting the overlay, the supporting the creation of the overlay district tonight. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Councilor. Councilor Gino, then Councilor Rotundo. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, so first of all, I wanna thank the subcommittee, Mr. Chairman, under, under your leadership, how effective this process was. I know, you know, sometimes it can be difficult to schedule these meetings, but I really think it was important that we took the residents' opinions into account. That's my dog, Sam, I apologize. Um, and took our time to go through this process because, you know, I've been a part of it since the very first meeting in its conception. Um, I thought there was a great amount of community input. And then since the last meeting, I've received a bunch of phone calls that apparently people did feel left out. So I'm glad that we're having this conversation. Um, I will say I received several emails and calls and messages over the weekend. And I just want to address to the public the response to some of the things that they've asked me and some of the things that I've discovered. I've been doing my homework since last Monday and have a couple of pages of things that I promised Mr. Chairman I'll be brief. And if I'm repetitive, I'm sorry, but I just want to let you know everyone know that I've been doing my homework and looked into this. So a couple of things I want to clarify that kind of summarizes most of the emails and calls I've got. Let's talk about what we're talking about today. We're discussing the overlay district. That's the only thing on the table. We're not talking about anything else or voting on anything else. So what this property is right now is limited industrial. So what can be put there? It's construction, contractors, a storage yard, general manufacturing, facilities, warehouse, and wholesale product distribution by special permit. None of these uses are allowed in the proposed overlay district. What the proposed overlay district would allow is residential, hotels, general retail, and restaurants like cafes, brew pubs, and, and other you know, commercial development we're looking for in the city. So I know that a lot of people are hung up on the residential piece, but that's one part of this puzzle, right? And you know, this overlay also includes important things to the city. It includes hotels, possibly, right? It includes retail, it includes restaurants. So when we look at the big picture, it's important to talk about that. And also it's important to remember that Witten Ave and the Mirage Cider are technically two different properties that we're talking about. So I know we've, we've kind of grouped them into one for the sake of the conversation and in different parts, but the Mirage site's already zoned general business. It's not limited industrial like the Witten Ave site, okay? So again, this is just my kind of spark notes for everyone watching to kind of simplify what I've learned in my week of research. Now, what this overlay does is sets the city up so that we can develop this site other than limited industrial use. So that's the first thing to keep into account. It also is not an entitlement of the proposed project of 22 wit. So this overlay, I mean, as much as personally, I, I think this is a great developer. I think they've done a lot in the city and have a great reputation. This overlay does not equal that project. It, it's, not, it's not a guarantee, okay? Um, and another concern I received was about the fire department, which I know Bob addressed, but um, you know, a lot of times people don't know what's going on in the background. And there were other issues that happened. I guess when they were tearing the fire station down, they found asbestos and there were other issues. And when you come into things like that during a pandemic, it, it takes time and it causes projects to take a little bit longer. So that's just one of the hurdles that the city overcame in trying to take down the old Pines fire station so that we can build the new one. So um, Bob, I'm excited that you think within, you know, the year that'll be done. I know I was still waiting on a final date, but, you know, I think people get nervous. And um, again, I've received a lot of phone calls, but I just want to let you guys know that I have looked into it. I do think that this 
zoning proposal is a good proposal for this property. I think it makes sense for the district. And I think if this, if this is done right, this can transform that entire northern entrance to the city of Revere with mixed use development, with restaurants, and with a waterfront that we don't have the ability to utilize right now. You know, there's not a space that if you have a kid in high school that wants to take up rowing, that they can go jump and go and row or rent a canoe or really utilize the beautiful waterfront that we have. So for all of these reasons, I am in support of the zoning project, but I really do encourage people to, to look into it and to look a little bit broader than just, um, you know, the, the conversations that they're having and what, what they're hearing, because, you know, for, for every conversation that you have, there's so much happening behind the scenes and so many other things that are developing. So um, I hope this clears up something. I hope I didn't go on too long. Sorry, Mr. Chairman. But thank I did you, think Councilor. Good, so thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Councilor Rotundo, then Council McKenna and Zambuto. Thank you, uh, Councilor Keith. It's quite clear that this is a project that is transformative in its nature and more importantly, transformative for the neighborhood and the city. I can look back a decade or so ago, I'm sure Tony Zambudo and uh, Councilor Granasco and others can remember when Jay Epsimos was looking to build 60 uh, units over in the Mirage area. Um, I am and have been a proponent for utilizing the waterfront and in particular the, the, the riverside for well over a decade. However, we also have to look at the needs of the neighborhood and many people are asking to have a meeting before this zoning amendment goes forward. I'm for that. And um, I know the developer not so well as others, but my take on him is he's a genuine, honest, forthright man. And I think that he will do well by the city as he has in the past. And I have no problems with that. I spoke from today in the past, always cordial, very, very full of uh, specific information that's requisite for this particular development, whether it be the financials of it or the, the phasing in of the development and so forth. And my personal opinion is this uh, is clearly going to be transformative, not only for the Riverside neighborhood, but also for the Pine side neighborhood in, in the sense of traffic, in the sense of uh, congestion and so forth, which I think will be minimal um, when you look at the long run of what could or could not go there and so forth. Right now they have tractor trailers coming in and out of G&J. &G. Um, but as Councillor Janino had pointed out, the specifics of uh, the, the greater util utility of that particular land, uh, it, it, it's quite clear. But again, um, I, I would ask it, the, the committee and the developer, if uh, there's no pressing issue here, uh, to have a community meeting, say at the Susan B. Anthony or some other school and have, uh, you know, the social distancing and so forth, because many residents have called me and have grabbed me. Actually, I just got back from uh, Market Basket and was grabbed, literally leaving Market Basket uh, about this particular issue. And uh, I would say, quite honestly, you know, for me, unless it's, you know, absolutely paramount that we vote on it tonight, I would ask that we have a community meeting just one more time for the people that did not make the other community meetings. Um, again, I will, uh, you know, speak to the, uh, the aspects of it as being a very progressive project, and I would be in favor for it, but uh, I believe we need to have a community meeting. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor. Council McKenna and then Councilor Zambuto. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, so uh, reading the um, committee uh, letter from the residents, uh, their concerns, one of the concerns they had was the drilling of the pilings uh, from the developer. And in Beachmont, we, we're, we are currently having new sewer pipe lay, laid down. Um, and there's a lot of drilling going on. So what the CDM Smith did was they videotaped uh, all the foundations that were getting um, inundated with the drilling. So they had a, like a record beforehand. So um, they were protected. So I would suggest that the developer uh, do the same thing. It protects the residents and it also protects you because people can't come back and say, oh, my foundation is cracked. 
uh, you know, because of the pilings. You'll have that on record. So I, I'm just making that recommendation because that will protect both you and the resident. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor. Good points. Councilor Zambudo and then Councilor Powers. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, to address the, the last item that was talked about, piles, that standard procedure, um, you know, with, with what's going to go on, uh, the neighborhood will be protected from any damage that would be uh, caused by uh, uh, pile driving. Uh, anybody that thinks any construction can be done on that site without piles uh, is, is sadly mistaken. It's just, it's not doable. Um, I've, I've, seen, I've seen all the concerns and, and I've seen all the work that you and your committee have done on this. And, and I have to say as, as the president, someone who appoints these committees, I don't wanna pat myself on the back, but I'm very proud of what I see here. This, this diligence is just unbelievable. Uh, and, and that goes for everybody from uh, Council Visconti to Serino to uh, Janino. Every, everybody on this committee has gone above and beyond uh, doing that homework and try to make uh, everybody somewhat comfortable. Now, I'm a realist and I know that not everybody's ever gonna be comfortable in a project like this. And I think uh, Council Granasso said it uh, best. We're voting on, uh, and I think Council Janino mentioned it also, we're voting on this overlay district. Uh, that's all we're really voting on here. But everybody's seen, uh, most everybody's seen the master plan and seeing what's coming down the, down the pike. It's gonna be absolutely transformative. Uh, I just hope I'm around to see the day when the kids are getting on the uh, uh, kayaks and uh, rowboats and uh, taking lessons out there and we're able to walk around that uh, waterfront uh, like it should be. Uh, so I'm looking forward to this, uh, but again, thank you for your work and all the committee members for the hard work that was put into this. And, and, and I know you made the administration jump through hoops to get to this point. And, and, uh, but you were, you were answering the questions that were put out by uh, the constituents. I know a lot of these questions had been asked during the 15 or 16 meetings that were held before. You know, there, There's been plenty of transparency in this. I guess some things were just assumed and, and maybe, maybe didn't get asked, but uh, Again, I'm certainly going to support uh, uh, this to be voted out of committee favorably tonight. Um, and uh, I, I hope you can uh, answer as many questions as we can here tonight for, for the, uh, the neighbors. But this is, this is one of those projects that really makes me uh, the hair stand up in the back of my neck because I see the future and, and the future is very bright for the uh, Riverside area and the Point of Pines for that matter. So thank you and thank all the committee members for all that hard work. And thanks to the administration and the developer for being uh, transparent and, and trying to answer all these questions, even though some of them are, are impossible to answer exactly at this stage of the game. What, what we have ahead of us here is a big permitting process uh, with MEPA and a lot of things that take an awful lot of time. So when we say to delay it a couple of weeks, when you say delay it a couple of weeks, it's a couple of months because that delays the permitting process that's already a, 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 a really difficult process. MEPA and, and, and all these things, they, they are time consuming. And the sooner their you know, proposals go in, uh, you know, you're talking months before they get back to you with answers. So it's, uh, you know, it's uh, anyways, it's a long process. And as Bob O'Brien said, this is only the first step uh, uh, to, the, to the end. Thank you. Thank you, Council and Council Powers. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, as the uh, City Council that represents that uh, section of Ward 5, uh, I have a few uh, questions, a few answers for some of those questions that went around. Uh, this week, there was a second piece of literature sent out that was unsigned and uh, a lot of disingenuous comments in that, in that uh, piece of literature. 
But I like to say, let's take the first, let's take the first one here, the Point of Pines Fire Station. I have been out to Arlington and uh, other cities and towns with the chief. This is going to happen. As a matter of fact, right now, there's a document in the purchasing agent's office that will call for the asbestos abatement team to come in. And the chief has assured me that this will be done probably by the demolition will start sometime in April, if not the end of March. Okay, the, the second question was access to the Point of Pines Beach from people that live in that building. I, sp I would live in that building. I spoke with Damien today, uh, just today or yesterday, and uh, he indicated to me that part of the lease agreement is gonna have a, a, a section in it that informs the people that that's a private beach and to uh, use that beach would be violating their, re their, their lease ag agreement, okay? Uh, and the, uh, the, the second, uh, uh, the third uh, issue was parking. Where are people gonna park? Well, about two months ago, I sent a uh, communication to the traffic commission with over 300 signatures requesting resident parking only on the Point of Pines and Riverside. And I might add, some of that area now is resident parking only. So no one will get a resident sticker unless they live in on, the, on those properties. And, the, and people from the proposed development will not be allowed uh, to, to come over there. Now, how does this benefit the city of Rodeo? I'm gonna ask you. First of all, we're getting rid of a, a dump. And that's basically what it is. It's a dump, a junk storage yard. How is this going to benefit the city of Revere financially? Well, we're going to get $750,000 from our Community Investment Trust Fund. We're going to get $750,000 from permitting fees. We're also going to get I&I uh, &I money to the tune of about $500,000. Okay, The uh, Community Investment Trust money will only be spent in the Ward 5 section of the city of Revere in that area down there that it affects. In addition, people talk about a fire station. You want to open a fire station, it costs you $950,000 a year to staff four, uh, 12 groups of men, uh, 12 uh, men in that station. Where are you going to get the money? Right here, a million dollars in tax revenue per year versus the $60,000 we're getting now. So just in increased revenue alone, it's $940,000 for the city of Revere. You're getting with it on an eyesore, and I think with the proper safeguards, this is going to be a great project for the city of Revere. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Councillor. At this point, I want to open it up to some of the residents. I know there's a few with the hands raised, uh, and if I can just ask the same if you could just uh, uh, keep it brief, as I, I'm sure they have many to speak. And then at the end, uh, we may have some commentary back from Bob O'Brien or, or myself, okay? Uh, first up, and state your name and your address for the record. We're gonna have, it looks like Patricia DeAngelis. Patricia, Patricia DeAngelis. Patricia. Just, yeah, you're gonna have to unmute yourself. All right, we'll, we'll hang off on that one. We'll go to the next. Uh, Michael Maynard. Oh, sorry, am I here? Name and address for the record, please. Hi, I'm uh, 21 Lancaster Ave. My name is Michael Maynard. I am one of the former presidents of the Beach Association. Um, I do have quite a few concerns with this project, especially the fact that I've heard a lot of buzzwords about how great and transformative this is going to be for the neighborhood. But with the current state of all these other buildings that have been built down on the beach, I see adding more and more and more. And you're saying that we're going to get more taxes to pay for a fire station, but we were fire promised the fire station before this was even a concern. So I don't really see that as part of this additive because the fire station was supposed to be redone anyway because of all the extra buildings down the beach now as far as the beach access goes who's going to enforce 
these um, rules for beach access because currently the police refuse to enforce the rules down here already. So if we're not getting the support from the city currently to enforce these things, I don't see what this change is gonna be just by writing something on a lease that we're gonna to have to not get enforced by a police officer later on. Um, that being stated, also the parking issue, the concern is because these people will be in the Point of Pines, so I'm not understanding how they'll be residents of the Point of Pines but not have access to parking permits in the city. There's very limited parking on the street on the, the I guess the ocean side of the Point of Pines. So due to the fact that we have very limited available parking now, like I have no parking on the street in front of my house right now. And if we put another building there, who's to say those people don't have visitors? I mean, if somebody stays over, I mean, what's stopping them from coming to this side to find parking where they don't have parking on the other side? And then when it comes to adding restaurants and all this other business to the area, that area is not very accessible walking from, from the point of Pines Beach side. So the infrastructure to change the walking to make everything a walking path to get over there, that, that opens up a lot of danger because you're gonna to have to put up guardrails along all of those walkways on the side of the highway. Because now you have cars getting off the highway at a high rate of speed, we're entering an exit of a business which was industrial previously is no longer industrial and you'll have more traffic flow coming out of that space therefore causing more congestion at the entrance and exit to the actual point of pines. Um, other than that, I mean, I could not support this in any way stretch um, from a personal who, who's lived here for the last 13 years. And if a building is gonna go up there, I'm gonna sell my house and take my tax money somewhere else. Thank you. Uh, next we have Michael Tucker. Good evening, Michael Tucker, 9 Ellison Street, Revere, Mass. Um, I am, would appreciate this to come out of committee and be voted favorably tonight. Um, I was fortunate enough to watch and listen to the several meetings, 15, 16 meetings that took place. I think most, if not all, of the questions have been answered during those meetings. Um, so I think to postpone this for any other type of meeting is just ludicrous. I hope that this gets voted out tonight so that the overlay district can be put in place before they develop anything. There'll be a lot more meetings and discussions that can take place. Thank you very much. Have a good night. Thank you, Mr. Tucker. Uh, next, Eric Lampadecchio. Name and address for the record. Eric Lampadecchio, 43 Tapley Avenue. Good evening. Um, I just have a couple of questions that I'd like to ask based on the conversation tonight. Um, but first and foremost, I just want to say I find it inappropriate to isolate this particular zoning change from the rest of the project, because as a whole, we worked on the project as a whole. We didn't work on it piecemeal. We worked on it as a master vision and a master plan. Uh, my first question is regarding the overlay district. So, Bob O'Brien, you talked a little bit about what that di district would allow, wouldn't allow would that allow this type of dwelling to be built by right? And the reason I'm citing this is uh, the, <clears throat> excuse me, the former site on Revere Street, the Cove, which was built up by right, the neighborhood came out against it and there was nothing the city could do that was, they had the zoning in place for that. So if this overlay district does go into effect, um, would we see a repeat of the Cove? Uh, Mr. Lampadecchio, just a reminder, the Cove um, was not built by right and we, re we rejected it but the state uh, and the federal government came in and uh, overrode us. So that's, it's, you're talking apples and oranges. As Point of it, as, Mr. President, the reason why they, right, it was an affordable housing on, project. Correct. So, but it was not voted on in favor by the, uh, re, the, the city council. Um, okay, as, far as, as far as by right goes, uh, Mr. Lampadecchio, um, it does give the opening for a, residential structure to, to be built on that site, the G&J &J site, and only the G&J &J site. And it, it, but it would still need to be approved by many different boards, including the Planning Board, Conservation Commission, MEPA, the Army Corps of Engineers, and et cetera. And the safeguards that were some of the, and obviously through, through some of the requests from the neighborhood, the safeguards that have been added also have been 
the massive amount of community input that we're requiring to have in advance, specifically with the neighbors in that area, Point of Pines and Riverside. Okay, so hopefully that answers that. But yes, of course, a buy right project could be built with many, many, many more um, um, meetings for approval. Okay, thank you. And my next, um, my next concern is regarding the boatyard. You know, early in this project and early in the meetings, um, I'd say as far as October of last year, we talked about purchasing the boatyard and the city shared that they were in the, the process of assessing the value of the property for a potential purchase. And tonight we're hearing that they're contemplating the purchase. So I just don't understand why we haven't moved on that as that was identified as a key component of this project. And in my opinion, I'd like to see the city do that first. I'd like to see the city put their ante on the table in this project rather than the residents run with the risk. You know, you're hearing from a lot of residents here. You've heard from residents that contacted you all weekend about their concerns. And in my opinion, master plan as a whole for this area, it was two sides to it. There were pros and cons. And in this situation, I don't feel like the residents have the reassurances from the city to get the pros of this project in place. The Point of Pines Fire Station has come up a couple of times here. Um, tonight we're hearing that construction drawings were not yet complete. This money was approved two years ago, August of 2019. It does not take two years to build a fire station into staff it. I'm sorry, I don't accept that as an answer and we deserve better in the Point of Pines. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Ms. Lambazecchio. And again, um, you know, I hear your frustration on the fire station. I mean, I brought it up as well, although that wasn't um, for any uh, reason that I think there should have been a holdup, um, but I agree. And sometimes the public process takes a little bit longer and there were some mitigation factors that came into play, um, but you're right. Um, the good news is we've been assured that the demolition is to begin within the next two months and the construction of course is gonna follow. And we've also been assured by uh, not just the mayor and his staff uh, that that fire station will be up and operating before any residential units are put are are, are uh, finished and are uh, in that that neighborhood. So we've been assured that by the mayor by the mayor and his team. We've also been assured that the boatyard will be acquired and in the possession of the city before any residential construction is completed. And that is an in integral part of the the entire overlay. That's an integral part for the community piece. That's an integral part for the boating, uh, the community rowing center and uh, the other uses that will be um, relevant to the, to the neighborhood. Those are the assurances that we asked for and those are the assurances. Again, um, we can hold, we, we will be able to hold the city and its team accountable for the, to that. Thank you. Um, we have Loretta Lacentra. Sorry about that. Um, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, beautiful. Uh, good evening. Um, thank you all for giving us an opportunity to um, have more dialogue about uh, the overlay district. Um, I did want to make one point uh, because there was made, mention made of 15 or 16 meetings that took place. There were a total of five that I'm aware of, uh, unless there was multiple meetings that were done in private, uh, the only public meetings or meetings of the uh, master plan committee were five. So just wanted to make that point. Correct. Um, the, um, uh, you would, uh, I think Bob, you had characterized this development as very similar to uh, the buildings that went up in the waterfront districts. Um, and I, I do uh, beg to differ with you on that. Um, this development sits squarely between two single family neighborhoods, uh, which I think is a huge distinction between this new development recommendation and uh, what, what was built on the beach. Um, so my, uh, your point is well taken about needing the overlay district um, authorization before uh, any further development can, can go forward. So what you're asking us is to trust that this, um, the items that we've uh, of concern that we let you know about will happen. And I have to ask you um, if you can see where we may be a bit skeptical about that. Um, 
So you're asking us to basically hope that our concerns will be addressed. Um, and Councillor Keith, I believe last week you were the one that said hope is not a plan. So, uh, you know, just, just um, my thoughts on that. Two other mm -hmm. items that were uh, in the letter that were conspicuously not mentioned were the flooding issues as well as um, the pollutants that potentially are on site at both the GJ location and the Fair Ave boatyard. And I, I believe that that's something that is very, very critical and of major concern to uh, both the Point of Pines neighborhood and the Riverside neighborhood. Thank, thank um, you, Loretta. Um, I'll, I'll ask uh, Bob, wait till the end if he wants to answer to some of those. Um, and yes, there are two good points and they, they, they are gonna be addressed. Um, and we'll talk, we'll finish that at the end. Um, okay. Mr. Uh, Ron Clark. Ron Clark. We're gonna hold off. We'll go to Sheila Nestor. I just have a couple of questions um, about the carbon just Sheila Nestor, Nestor yep. 26 Chamberlain Ave. Yeah. Regarding the permit parking, when is that going to take place? Um, for for the Chamberlain Chamberlain Ave area for the Point of Pines area, correct. Um, Councilor Powers wish to speak on that specifically. Councilor, uh, yes, uh, Mr. Chairman and uh, Miss Nestor, uh, I had put that application in a couple of months ago, and the one of the primary reasons for putting it in was because of the proposed parking meters on Revere Beach, in addition to this particular development. Uh, it is going to be heard on the 25th of March at 5 p.m. And uh, I would ask that anyone that has a, uh, a concern with that, attend those meetings, whether they're on Zoom or in person, and uh, show your support uh, for, for that parking. It's not going to it's not going to diminish parking that anyone has. Okay, we're not making up spaces. But we are, what we are doing is we're going to require if you have a, a permit for your car to park there that you have to show a valid registration registered from that address, uh, that, that street. As far as the uh, proposed development before us, no one is going to get a sticker for, from that development. Okay, so. Nothing is going to change except we're going to get some of the cars out of the Point of Pines that don't belong there, that aren't registered there, where we're losing the excise tax on those cars. Any question, uh, you can call me at my home. I'd be more than happy to answer them. Thank, Thank you, you. Councillor. Um, in that, um, we have one more person. Um, Ron Clark, you there? Ron? Uh, oh, one more, Lou Marcakis. You gotta stay, you gotta put Mr. Marcakis, see there? Name and address for the record. Nope. All right. Oh, we have two more and this is, and we're just gonna finish it up here. P Patricia DeAngelis. Patricia DeAngelis. Okay, and uh, oh, we got a few more people. Lou Marcakis. Yes. <laughs> Mr. Yes. Marcakis, name and address for the record, please. Oh my God, you lost me. Is this Patricia? Patricia DeAngelis, name and address for the record. Yes, Patricia DeAngelis, 11 Bateman Ave in the Point of Pines. We had a little trouble you? with our muting. Thank yep. you. Um, I just want to vo voice my, my, my disapproval of this. Um, I don't believe it will bring any value to our neighborhoods um, between the parking, um, the, the congestion of traffic that will follow through our neighborhood from people leaving that area just to take a drive through. I don't believe aesthetically it will bring, it will enhance our neighborhood. Uh, 290 units is 290 too many. I think with the building of Ocean Avenue and Revere Beach Boulevard, for examples, I think that's more than enough 
for this area. Um, I believe also the proposed walkway to give that area access to this side of the roadway uh, should not be built. Um, and I don't believe that just putting in a lease that they will not be able to use our area, our private beach will be enforceable. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Angeles. Okay. Uh, Mr. Maliko, name and address for the record. Uh, Vincent Maleko, 15 Wadsworth Ave. Okay. Uh, first of all, I would be as succinct as possible. First of all, you, uh, you talk about the par parking. Parking, we have supposedly uh, uh, enforced overnight parking. Well, it's not enforced. You're going to put all these stickers out. It's, it's, it's totally ridiculous because they don't enforce it. And if you, I've lived down here since 1977. And people have parked here all the time. And uh, nothing ever happens. And far as the whole thing, keeping people off the beach, everyone knows it is not enforced. The police don't enforce it. I mean, like, why are you making these things up? I mean, they're not going to be enforced. And we're all going to be negatively impacted. The population density in the Pines is extremely high. Uh, the traffic is ridiculous on North Shore Road. In the summertime, if you call for an ambulance, and this happened to me once, Ambulance. It took 20 minutes to get here. Now, for a if you have a fire and you have the fire station, if the timing is incorrect, how the heck are they going to get down here? They can't. We significantly impacted by the, the dense population and the traffic. And it's not going away. The water pressure down here is bad. So you're going to put up another large unit. It's going to reduce the water pressure. And, uh, you know, I mean, you, you're not being realistic. I mean, you just want the money. Okay. Another thing, too. Um, we have no fire station. We have a picture of fire station for two years. The only time we have fire service down here is for the 3rd of July. The other thing, during deep tide, portions of that area in the uh, riverside flood, as you know. The oceans are rising. So what you probably, I would assume, surmise, is you're either gonna have parking underneath that will flood, like the Garfield School parking lot does when there's heavy rains. This really negatively impacts the community and really should be put aside. If you're going to have a project and not a total, opposed to anything, nothing that large. The schools are overcrowded. The quality of education is diminishing. I'm a retired educator. And uh, you really, I would strongly suggest, well, first of all, no one here on the council lives down the pines. So you're not personally impacted, but we are. Thank you for allowing me to speak. Thank you, Mr. Malenko. All right, we have a few more. Um, <clears throat> I'm gonna ask Ron Clark one more time. Ron Clark? I, I think I got it. Can you hear me this time? Oh, yes, Mr. Clark. Okay, just name a couple of things. For, name and address uh, for Ron Clark, Whitnav, Point of Pines. What, which, what's the address? 98 Whitnav, Point of Pines. Okay. So technically this project's right at the end of my street. So I got a couple of questions. One is um, about the flooding, which this whole project, from what I understood, some of the early meetings that were held down the Yacht Club, the big thing was flood mitigation. It seems like that's dropped to the bottom of the list right now. The other thing I don't understand completely is, you know, you guys are looking to do this zoning change and you've already picked out a contractor. That, that kind of surprises me that we're so far ahead on that end of it, but we don't even have the land approved yet. I have a question for John. He was mentioning some of the numbers on taxes and stuff. What would those numbers be compared to if this was condos instead of apartments? I'm curious what the tax revenue would be then. Would it be much greater? The, um, the other concern I have is that it's, you know, apartments compared to condos, people don't really have much ownership. There's not a lot of, you know, um, commitment to the city. 
you know, like, like if I could just answer to a few of them, there is, you know, and I agree what you're saying, you know, it, you know, there's a person from Redgate here that obviously is would be a, a, a proponent, but th there's no, there's zero, um, there's nothing approved here right now. And there's not going to be a, a complex appro approved tomorrow. This is for the overlay. And of course, you know, Redgate being someone that's been in our city that's done some, you know, really nice projects, it would be is, is showing some interest. I'm sure that they'd still have to go through the process of finding the financing to want to do it and be able to do it. And, you know, just to, and again, just to talk about the flooding piece, nothing can be done without that pr approval and process and making sure that all of that is mitigated. That, okay. that doesn't matter what the zoning we do, you can't build on the water without everyone approving it. And, that, and when I say everyone, you know it's everyone. And, the, and when I say the Army Corps of Engineers, MEPA, all of these groups have to be involved in that process. So we, 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 we wouldn't be able to do anything. You know, they, they, they were much um, more in tune than we are. So that would, and I'm not saying, I'm not saying it's gonna be perfect, but I certainly know there's gonna be a lot of hurdles. And I would just ask that people speaking that the focus is continuing to just be on one piece of this project. This is, this is a, a, an overlay that's going for, for a much larger space. There's a, a huge amount of recreation space that's involved in here. I don't, and again, I'm not gonna tell you how you should feel, but I can't ever think that someone would say aesthetically that the project is not good considering that when you drive through there, there's an empty rundown old restaurant with some sort of, I don't even know if it was a pool or what it was. There's a tow yard with a big rusty uh, roof and there's an empty boat yard. So okay. I'm not sure <laughs> the aesthetics is, it's not, I mean, Maybe, maybe I'm wrong, but when I drive through there, yes, the Point of Pines is a beautiful neighborhood. I wish I bought there years ago. I was afraid of flooding. I was wrong. You know, I agree. I agree. I don't want to jump out in my, in my backyard either. You know, there's no yeah. doubt in my yeah. mind about that. And I'm all for a park. I'm all for walkways. I'm all for a nice pier out there, fishing pier. I'm out for the boathouse. Right. And I'm all for, in favor for that completely. It just seems like we're rushing more. Again, that's the parts, to me, that are the project that are important. And again, all I see is with rushing up out the apartments. That's my big problem with this whole thing. But then I have a couple more questions. Yeah, Obviously, John's please. probably going to answer me about the tax. But then I got water and sewer problems that, you know, the Pines is, from what I understand, the beginning of the line, and it goes down Revere Beach. How clear on that, I don't really know. But I don't want this all on my WRMA bill. At the end of all this, when the contract is long gone with all his money in his pocket, and then it's my problem. Understood. So those are some of my concerns. And my biggest concern of everything is going to be the noise. This is a beach community and I don't want to be blown. Out. I'm a member of the yacht club. I don't want to, I want to live down my boat during the summer. I don't want to be blown out of my boat by pilings. You know, six days a week would be obviously insanity. You know, so that's, I guess, part for another conversation. Thank, but. You, Mr. thank you, Mr. Clark. We're, um, thank you very much. Good points and good questions. We're just going to wait till the end. We have a few more people and um, if we can just remember the brevity, uh, Deb Martone, name and address for the record. Yeah, hi, uh, Deb Deborah Martone, twenty one Fowler Ave, Point of Pines. I have a, um, one. My first first of all, I, I'm an opponent of, of that Riverside development, uh, uh, and, and maybe I could you guys can convince me otherwise. But at this point, I'd like to know. You did mention Councillor. Uh, Keith, that nothing's been approved here. What has been approved here? <laughs> the over the the potential rezoning overlay of the area of the area that is in, in question. Obviously, the the park area, uh, the boat, the, the the empty boat yard, and the G and J. Due to some of the concerns from some of the residents, the Mirage site is is looking to be. We're, we're going to probably offer a resolution to pull that out. Although the Mirage site really can't be redeveloped into any sort of residential, it would only be able to be used currently what it's used as, which is, it's a, I think it was a restaurant or a club, nightclub at one point, but more often it'll be used for some form of a public space or public use space. So it would offer to rezone that entire area. But with that all being said, there's only one parcel that would be able to have any sort of construction that would be residentially used. Okay, and what uh, flood mitigations are associated with this approval? Everything, or? everything that the state and the federal government requires will be will be required. Everything, and then some. And why why do apartments have to be part of this whole? 
question, well, perhaps, but uh, nonetheless, I'll ask it. Uh, I mean, why do apartments have to be included in beautifying this whole area? Well, I'll, I'll answer that, and then we're going to move to the next person. The apartments, you know, it doesn't have to be apartments, of course, but this is a, in order to fund, in order to do all of this, it's a private-public partnership. The, the traffic improvements that have to happen, there'll be a turnabout that actually, that actually help people on Mills Ave, that'll help people in the Pines from cut-throughs. That isn't going to get paid. The government won't just do that. They'll do that in recognition of some sort of a project that enhances the area and also gives them a reason to want to fund more. And the same thing, we're not going to be able to purchase the boat yard with our own money. We're not going to be able to, you know, we're not going to be able to do it. This community improvement, improvement money that would be possible. And there's also going to be uh, significant amounts of rent money to renovate those parks and to uh, really, really add to, to what's over there. So that's where the private public piece comes into play. And of course, we don't own a boat yard. We don't own a tow yard and we don't own the Mirage site. Um, so whatever can happen there can happen there. But tomorrow someone can come in there and say, this is just as uh, a bigger plan to happen on that boat yard. Uh, I'm sorry, that uh, Mirage site. We've seen a million different proposals on the boat yard. Um, so in order to secure up something like that, that's the only way if there is a private public partnership. Hope that answers your question. Heidi Green. Um, good evening, Heidi Green. I live at 19 Wadsworth Avenue in the Point of Pines. I am also concerned about the cumulative traffic um, that has gone on with all of the new development along the beach in addition to this, as well as the noise, the pilings, uh, the noise and the vibration from pilings is very loud in addition to all the other tra noises like the planes that constantly go over the point of pines. I would love for the council to do something about that. My question though is the underlying uh, zoning is industrial. You, this overlay is going to change it to mixed use, which includes residential. What would be the residential density that would be a matter of right with the zoning overlay that you're about to vote on this evening for the G&J site? Um, Mr. O'Brien, I believe you have the, uh, the size wise uh, as far as the height. Um, and that would be up to five stories, correct? It's, uh, yeah, six stories actually. Uh, similar to the height of the beach house and considerably smaller than the height of some of the older developments. But the um, density or, or floor area ratio, FAR, which is the measurement of density, is about 1.5 to 1.6. Uh, the beach house, for example, is 2.5. So this is considerably less dense than anything that's been built along the waterfront, uh, but it is of a, pro of a comparable height. Thank you. Next. Uh, Mr. President, point of order. State your point. My uh, understanding is that uh, as a matter of right, it would be less than 150 units uh, if my mathematics are incorrect. And I would also like to point out that currently we have a G and J that has uh, tractor trailer uh, removal trucks. We have dumpsters there. We have much more truck and traffic movement from that uh, facility that is more deleterious to the area, in my opinion, than cars. And uh, more importantly, one of the things that is not being uh, openly said here and that, that should be forthright is that part of the reason that we go through this type of a zoning change is to allow developers to uh, make improvements in the community. And there would be no improvement on the water uh, flooding and watering sore in that area without this particular development. And there's no way that any developer would do this project unless it was residential. And that's, that's the complete honesty here. And anybody who tells you any different is uh, hoodwinking you. And that's pretty much what's <clears throat> going on now, people. And uh, to be quite honest with you, if this project does not take place, all this overlay district does not take place in the future you will have uh, more problems with uh, water pressure you will have more problems with flooding and you will have zero mitigation and so i want you to keep that in perspective and this is a really hard choice as uh you know eric on the have put forward the, the pros and the cons uh the, the the real negatives here is if this project or shall I say this overlay district does not take place. This project will not take place. And those improvements 
on the riverside, off of that matter, that towards the pines will not take place. And that's pretty much where we are, folks. Thank you, Councilor. We're, um, we're, we're pushing on some serious time. If we're just gonna go through, we have a few more here. Uh, we have uh, Kristen Cousins Nappy, name and address for the record, please. Ms. Nappy? Name and address for the record, please. All right, we'll go to the next person. Angela Sawaya, name and address for the record, please. Hi, Angela Sawaya, um, 15 Bateman Avenue in the Point of Pines. I'm the acting president of the Point of Pines Beach Association. Um, I was really excited to hear about this project, but this was before we found out there was going to be 290 units. I would like to know what they're going to do to protect our beach. Our beach is a private beach, and people move to this area because they know it is a private beach. Now, all summer long, all I've done is have to call the police for this or for that of people complaining that the people are on our beach. Well, they come here and they say, there's nothing we can do. Absolutely nothing we can do. We're not gonna go on the beach. We're not gonna kick people off the beach. People can go wherever they want. What are they going to do to stop this from happening? I know that when I moved down here, I moved, it, moved down here because it was a private beach. Mm -hmm. Now also, the other thing is once this building goes up, what happens to the sunset views we have here on the side beach? Are those gone? Because Everybody sits there, takes pictures and posts them on our webpage and all over the place of how beautiful our beach is. Well, what happens to all our sunset views? I, I just, I, I don't know. I don't know what to say about this because I'm just, I'm really, really upset that we were not more involved. I, I really believe that we should have a meeting where all the residents can actually come, go to an auditorium, go to like the high school, go to the gym, and everybody can voice their opinions because there's so much that we really need to talk about that will save the way that, that, that will help the residents feel a little bit more assured that we're not going to get lost in, in, in the process of this building being built. You know? so, uh, your, your, your concerns are my concerns and our concerns. And that's something that we've, we've added to the amendments on this uh, draft overlay is any developer. And we obviously the assumptions is that potentially it's a red gate or someone uh, like that is, is they will have the community meetings before anything is done design and, and to go through the design process with the residents of the neighborhood. Now, of course, I don't, I can't speak to the height variance on the boatyard site currently to what it will be. Um, but you know that you're not look, taking a picture through the metal tin uh, building that's there right now to see a sunset and you, well, you obviously could to the left or the right. So I would imagine that's still gonna continue to be the same. Uh, but I, I, those concerns are in the community meeting process is extremely important to all of us. And there will be a community meeting process. It's, 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 written, in, it's written, written into this overlay as an amendment. Thank you. And, and I asked for a roll call of the subcommittee. I just want to give, uh, there's two more residents that have had their hand up. I want to give them an opportunity to speak and we'll move on. Miss um, Jocelyn, Jocelyn Coe, name and address for the record. Hi, Jocelyn Koo, 15 Witten Ave. Um, I, I just wanted to be able to share um, a little bit about my concerns with the talk about transparency. Um, I think when I first heard about this project, I was incredibly excited. I love the, the idea of a park. I have two dogs. I'd love to go out there and walk them around. It looked beautiful, you know, walking along the water on those sidewalks that were planned. Um, so I was on those meetings, um, those four or five meetings that occurred earlier this year. Um, but I'm 31 years old. I'm on Zoom all day, every day. I know how to use technology. I don't have kids, so I have an, I have the time and the space, and I don't have you know kids yelling for me. So I had I was able to be there at those meetings, um, and even now today, people are having trouble getting on and unmuting themselves, and it's not the best place to be able to ensure that every single person can have their voice heard who wants their voice heard, and in those meetings, the, the focus was on the flood mitigation and the new park. And there was, you know, this talk about maybe this building, but we don't really know. And, and then suddenly we're, we're voting 
And I didn't even find out that that vote that happened last week happened until a week later. And so, you know, even on this meeting, we're talking about the, the fire station and how, oh, well, you guys might not know there's things going on in the background that you aren't aware of. There was asbestos. So that's just a, an admission that, that there is a lack of transparency in some cases. Um, and so I think for us to feel confident and comfortable about the possibility of a residential space, we need to trust you all. You know, you are, you are city councilors, right? You're representing us. And everybody here on, you know, who's here today, with the exception, I think one person is concerned. And, you know, this is, it's just quality of life. This, this is our, it's, it's our lives, right? And so I'm just asking that moving forward, that there is more attempts made to be sure that, you know, is, is there are people in this neighborhood who speak Spanish, who don't speak English, who may not be able to participate yeah. in some of those meetings. So I just, I think there could be different and better efforts to ensure that everybody can be aware of what's going on. And I'm asking that you all take that um, responsibility in doing that moving forward. Thank you, Ms. Koo. And just for the record, we do have a translator on um, and we did for a, lot, a number of the uh, overlay meetings. And you're right though, um, any perception that we are not uh, given enough information is, is, is understandable. Um, you know, we can't, we can't, no one could have predicted the last year we were gonna to have to have all these remote meetings. Uh, and that's, uh, that's unfortunate, but the world does continue to move on at times in some areas. But I, I totally understand. And just a reminder again, this is not approving a project. This is not approving a project. This is Mr. President, uh, excuse me. Uh, just let me, Council, let me just get to these last two and then we'll, we'll, move, we'll, we'll move on to. I was just going to ask if uh, lady. we could have the developer speak as well. Yep, he'll have an opportunity to if you'd like. Mr. Thank Chair. Mr. Lady. Chairman, I object. Okay, boss lady. Sorry Mr. about that. Uh, my um, that's started. my computer's nickname. I'm <laughs> Stacy Wyzanthi, and three Lancaster Ave. And I'd like to thank you for listening. Um, we've been down in this area for about 20 years, and what we've seen is the more building that happens on the beach. I happen to live right by the storage drain floods. The pipes have broken. They've been replaced a few times. The gas lines have been replaced a few times because, because of the settling of the sand and the silt and the earth on these streets. We can't even get gas lines to stop breaking. We waited two years to have a gas line repaired, okay? Um, I'm not quite sure that any addition to the water table or any more weight, being a layman, is going to further damage my quality of life because when I take my 17 pound dog out for a walk and he can't walk because the smell's so bad that he goes back in the house, who's going to keep up with this? Who's going to fix the pipes? Who's going to ensure that even when we buy a car, we have to take it down to our house and see if it clears the driveway because everything has sunk so bad. We don't even have a clear path from the street into the driveway. It's just, I'm all for beautifying. I'm all for recreation. I'm just not sure the city can handle, the infrastructure can handle anymore. Thank you. And the traffic is also a major concern, the noise. And I totally agree with the disruption that the building is going to cause, because as it is, when a plane goes over, our houses shake. What's gonna happen when we have pile drivers five and six days a week for how many months? Thank you, Ms. Wazins. Thank you. Thank you. Um, at this point, I'd like to ask that the clerk read into the record some of the um, amendments and resolutions that will be put in front of the city council um, on next Monday, if this, this should move to the next process. And again, just a reminder, this is the zoning subcommittee. This would then go to general, the full city council as a whole, uh, potentially. And then again, no projects being approved tonight. Zero projects are being approved tonight. Just have to stress that this is for an entire overlay zoning. Um, There's no projects being approved tonight. Matt, Madam Clerk. Sure. So Chair, Mandy, would you like me to read? I'll read the first resolution. Um, and the second resolution is more of uh, four amendments that were proposed by uh, Chairman Keefe. Uh, and the first resolution I'll read as follows. Whereas the Revere Planning Board at its meeting of February 9th, 2021, 
unanimously adopted the attached riverfront master plan. And whereas the zoning subcommittee of the Riviera City Council is recommending city council approval of the riverfront overlay district that allows for the private residential and commercial development envisioned in the riverfront master plan. And whereas the zoning subcommittee is concerned that the public sector elements of the riverfront master plan might not keep pace with the planned private development allowed by the riverfront zoning, zoning overlay district. Therefore, the zoning subcommittee hereby recommends to the Revere City Council approval of the following requests of the mayor and his economic development and other relevant staff in order to encourage and assure the full and timely completion of all elements of the riverfront master plan. That the mayor provide to the city council quarterly written reports on the progress and prospects of each of the major public and private components of the riverfront master plan implementation, as well as the master plan as a whole. That the first such quarterly report should detail for each of the public sector components, the riverfront master plan, their projected cost, their identified and or potential funding sources, and progress made with respect to securing each source, each such funding source. With respect to specific elements of the riverfront master plan, the Riverside Boatworks property. This component of the master plan is considered a high priority and early action item on which some definitive progress is expected and required by or about the end of fiscal year on June 30th, 2021. To that end, the first quarterly report should address the status of ongoing discussions with the current Riverside Boatworks property, property ownership pursuant to their expressed willingness to sell this property to the city of Revere for a mutually agreed agreeable price yet to be finally determined. The outcome of the property appraisal commissioned to that end by the current Riverside Boatworks property owner and how it compares with the appraisal that has now been commissioned by the city of Revere. <clears throat> Prospects for a mutually acceptable purchase and sale agreement between the city of Revere and current Riverside Boatworks ownership based on those two appraisals. The proposed source and amount of city appropriations for the purpose of this property and the scope and schedule of such appropriations. Alternative strategies to secure city ownership of the property in the absence of a voluntary purchase and sale agreement, which would be initiated and pursued before the end of 2021 ongoing efforts to secure public funding to rehabilitate this property for community uses through the Seaport Economic Council and or otherwise with particular focus on the establishment of a community rowing center at this location. Ongoing discussions with any and all prospective facility managers regarding the design, funding, staffing and operation of such a community rowing center. <clears throat> the second is planned transportation improvements progress on the design and funding on the multimodal transportation improvements as illustrated in the Riverfront Master Plan, which are likewise a high priority and early action item with particular attention to the status and schedule of the following. One, ongoing discussions with the Massachusetts Department of Transportation and the Department of Conservation and Recreation regarding the reconfiguration of southbound Route 1A off ramps. Two, the existing city application for the funding of these transportation improvements through the newly established Massachusetts One Stop for Growth Program, which coordinates mass works and other available funding in support of transportation projects that facilitate private development. Three, the additional prospect of funding all or part of these planned transportation improvements with new funding expected through a federal infrastructure bill. And four, ongoing discussion with the Massachusetts Bay Transportation Authority regarding the establishment of a bus stop to service the Riverfront District so as to make Gibson Park the planned new North Maritime Center at Riverside Boatworks and the planned private redevelopment of the Riverfront Zoning Overlay District more generally accessible by public transportation. <clears throat> the planned recreational and resiliency improvements to Gibson Park. Progress on the design, funding, and construction of the public improvements to Gibson Park and, in, and environs with particular attention to the status and schedule of the following. One, projected implementation of various components of the recreation and resiliency improvements is contemplated in the Riverfront Master Plan with particular attention to Gibson Park itself and planned stormwater holding facilities under the new multi-use within Gibson Park. 
two projected sources of existing public and private funding for these recreational and or resiliency improvements, particularly in the context of the ongoing municipal vulnerability preparedness program. And three, the additional prospect of funding all or part of these planned recreational and or resiliency with new funding expected through a federal infrastructure bill. And four, the relevance of planned recreational improvements to the planning, design, funding, and construction of a new Revere High School, both during construction and beyond. <clears throat> Further, the reactivation of the public pier, progress on the structural evaluation of the current structure and its potential reconfiguration and planned rehabilitation in anticipation of the transfer of ownership and control from the Red Gate to the city of Revere. And finally, the new Point of Pines Fire Station, the status and schedule of both demolition, the exiting <clears throat> vacant fire station and the design, construction and staffing of the new planned fire station, which is new, newly fully funded. That's the resolution. <clears throat> and these are proposed amendments submitted by Chairman Keefe. Um, I guess in, this is in uh, response to the uh, March 12th uh, letter that was received uh, by the committee over the weekend. Uh, the first amendment is, there's four amendments. The first is as follows. The Riverfront Zoning Overlay District is restricted to the G&J property. Two, the design of any residential development proposed for the GJ site must be presented and discussed at a public meeting of the Development Advisory Group for the Riverfront Master Plan before it is submitted for consideration by the Site Plan Review Committee. That presentation and discussion will include issues of proposed project siting, massing and density, its orientation to both its waterside and parkside perimeters, structural and landscape architecture, unit count and unit mix, resident and visitor parking ratios and locations, on-site resiliency measures and their implications for flooding in the surrounding neighborhoods, civic and community amenities within and around the building, public accessibility to the waterfront and other issues and opportunities related to the adjacent Riverside and Point of Pines neighborhoods. This meeting will be publicly noticed and shall provide ample opportunity for public comment before, during, for some reasonable period after the meeting. And those public comments will be organized and made available to the site plan review committee before they commence consideration on the proposed project. The third amendment, on street parking. No resident of any development within the riverfront zoning overlay district will be entitled to on street parking rights or privileges on any of Rivera's streets, including but not limited to though, to those within the adjacent Riverside and or Point of Pines neighborhoods. And no developer and or manager of any such development will be entitled to seek any zoning relief from this requirement now or in the future. And the last <clears throat> amendment is as follows. Commercial elements of any residential development. The developer is required to give preference in the leasing of any commercial space in any planned residential development of the GJ site to Revere residents and businesses. And to that end, the developer must provide to the mayor on or before the date on which the building permit is issued with a local outreach plan that describes a proposed tenant selection process and the favorable lease terms that will optimize the likelihood of a Revere resident slash business tenancy. The developer must report to the mayor and the city council on the outcome of that process no less than 90 days before the occupancy of such commercial space. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Council Rotundo. Thank you. Um, several concerns about uh, what are being asked. Having uh, Frank here, uh, I can look back as I've been scanning through uh, old documents from the Wonderland Transit Oriented Project and actually uh, what took place there. Um, I don't believe uh, we're going to be able to uh, facilitate uh, what was asked by the developer unless it's actually in the overlay district as a written ordinance. More importantly, if we strictly go for G and J that would be spot zoning. If I'm not uh, correct, someone correct me. So the other aspect of it is th this is uh, without saying if uh, this project, if this zoning does go through, 
and someone were to develop a project there, there is no doubt that they're not going to have cars on any uh, other street within the area, obviously because it's permit parking in the city now. Um, my, my biggest part of this that I would like to say is this overlay district has to be complete, not piecemealed. And in order for this uh, project to take place, meaning the, the project that um, is proposed by Redgate is something that uh, part of me really wants to have a community discussion because at, the, at this point, many, many people have concerns specifically about the amendments that I'm not so sure can be held up uh, in a court of law unless you have a TIF or other uh, particular aspects of, of law attached to the resolution and amendments because all they are, are basically, uh, they, they're not law, they don't dignify law. In particular, asking for someone to uh, have uh, Revere residents as preference, unless you have a TIF in which you're offering taxes in lieu of uh, a particular interest for the city, I can't see that taking place. Now, what I will say is I trust this developer. I trust him in, in, implicitly, and I don't trust many people. And um, that's part of the reason why I'd like for him to speak. Um, I do trust him. And I know that the city is going to move forward with this overlay district regardless. And I would like the people to know that I trust them. And I think if you give them a chance, um, not that he'll win you over, but he'll give you a fair shake. And um, I don't believe he'll do you wrong. So mm -hmm. if we could let him speak, I'd appreciate thank that. You, uh, I just, you know, thank you, Councillor. I, I, I would, but I just want, I'm just, trying to remind everyone and again and I know Bob O'Brien's going to speak to a few of those is you know the focal the focal point of course is is, is we all know what the focal point has become um, but if you if you listen to the resolution there was so much more about the uh, whole project and what's more, I think is more pertinent and, and more effective and impactful to the entire neighborhood um, again that was this was well vetted through the, the zoning board members um, and also through uh, Bob and Frank and um, I, I'm pretty, I'm pretty confident in the legitimacy of them. So I'll ask Bob to speak. And, and if, if Mr. Sarzi, uh, sorry, you want to speak real briefly, you certainly can, but, um, when, then we're going to move, move past that. Mr. O'Brien. Mr. President, I'm, at, I'm asking for yes. a roll call. <laughs> Bob, can you just speak to that? And then we'll, we'll, we'll go ahead. Yeah, I'll be, I'll be very brief. Thank you. Um, speak, speak all night. Number one, uh, Mr. Chairman, I, I agree with you that the First Amendment read, which has to do with the responsibility for the city to report to the council and community on a regular basis on all aspects of master plan implementation is at least as important as the amendments to the overlay district as it's uh, now written. I think that's extremely important. It's sensitive to your issue and other issue, the issues of other. The public portion moves forward as, as quickly as the private portion. Um, secondly, I do believe that we do not have a spot zoning issue to be responsive to Councillor Rotundo's uh, question because it is its own industrial zone district. So there is no spot zoning within the district. The district that as a whole is its own uh, zoning district and will remain so. Um, we removed the uh, Mirage site at the request and suggestion of the community, which I think for reasons previously discussed, does not basically compromise this, this project at all. Um, I think we're moving on a number of fronts to implement the master plan. They will all be addressed in the regular reporting to the city. Um, as was you know, described in, in the rather extensive reading of that uh, draft amendment, and I think it's responsive to uh, the concerns of the community in all respects. I would say if we do not pass the overlay district, we will not have a project. When we do have a project, that's when the community meeting to discuss its details is appropriate and required by the overlay district. So I think the community is protected, the city is protected uh, in all respects by these two resolutions together. 
Thank you, Mr. O'Brien. Um, Council Gino. Thank you for the leeway, Mr. Chairman. I really appreciate it. I just have one comment to make, and I normally don't rebut to negative or nasty comments, but I'm getting a few saying that, you know, the, the transparency issue. I just want to make it very clear out of all the meetings I've been a part of, I've seen multiple projects happen through the city. I've been a part of many boards and organizations that have planned projects like this. This was published on Revere TV. This was in the newspaper. This was online. And every single meeting was also on the city website and on the city calendar published just like a council meeting. And at every meeting, we announced when the next meeting would be. So in terms of transparency and feeling blindsided, I, I don't know what else we could have done to let people know what was happening because I believe we've covered every source of media, print and digital you could possibly imagine. I also know that there was great participation in these meetings. People showed up, they asked questions and there was a lot of collaboration. So for people that feel surprised by this, I'm truly sorry. I don't know how you could possibly do that, but I really encourage you, you know, to get involved, check the city website, read the newspaper, watch the city's TV station because you may find out what's happening here and not just in your own neighborhood, but the whole city because it is advertised but you do have to put in a little effort and look for it. So thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, thank you, uh, Councilor. And at this point, I'd like to ask uh, Madam Clerk, would you call the roll on the subcommittee part one and part two? Mr. President, Mr. Chairman, at least to have the developer speak. I mean, roll people- Roll call ask for Mr. Chairman. <laughs> Chairman Keefe, are we taking the amendments up first? Those were yeah. one through four. That included the district scope, the design review, the off-street parking concerns, and the commercial elements of any residential development. Those Please last four amendments that were read, okay? Yes. <clears throat> uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, point of que uh, question, parliamentary question. Will we be voting on the amendments and then the overlay district or? It would, so the, oh, go ahead, okay. Chairman. Mr. Clark, you can, you can answer. Okay, as a point of parliamentary procedure, the amendments will be taken up first and then the amendments are, if, if approved by the zoning subcommittee are then essentially added in to the proposed overlay district. So then the committee will be voting on the proposed overlay district as amended. So th there'll be three roll call votes. The third will be Monday, the following Monday, correct? If reported out favorably as amended. Correct. So tonight okay. will be tonight will be the amendments, and then 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 the support of the zoning subcommittee, which would in essence be in favor of the the, the overlay as amended, and then uh, Monday would be the third for the council of, of the whole the whole. So no, I, I apologize. So will we have three roll call votes tonight on one on one amendment, one on another amendment, and then the overall, or one on the amendments? and then one on the overall. One on the one amendments and one on the overall. Okay. Correct, uh, Madam Clerk? That's that's if you would like to do that. That's the the way committee could yeah. certainly take up the amendments separately. The committee could take them up all together. It's it's up to the, I, the choice I, of the I, committee. I mean, the amendments are favorable to the, the residents of the year. The amendments are favorable. Take them all together. So Move we take them all together. Thank you. <laughs> on the proposed amendments uh, submitted by Councillor Keefe to the Riverfront Overlay Zoning District, Councillor Janino. Yes. Voting yes. Councillor Guanasso. Yes. Yes. Councillor Serino. No. Voting no. Councillor Visconti. Yes. Voting yes. Councillor Zambudo. Yes. Yes. And Chairman Keefe. Yes. Yes. The amendments have been accepted approved by the zoning subcommittee. Now, on an ordinance establishing the Riverfront Overlay District as amended, Councilor Janino. Yes. Voting yes, Councilor Guanasso. Yes. Yes, Councilor Serino. No. No, Councilor Visconti. Yes. Yes. Councilor Zambudo. Yes. Yes, and Council President Keefe. Council Chairman Keefe, thank Chairman you. Chairman Keefe, yes. my apologies. Chairman Keefe, voting yes. <clears throat> the Riverfront Overlay District, as amended, will be forwarded to the full city council on March 22nd with a favorable recommendation. Thank you. 
Mr. Chairman, would it be possible to allow the developer to speak and answer some of the questions of the community um, at this time? You know, if, if possible, I'd love to have him at the next meeting. Uh, he can certainly speak uh, bef as I present the zoning subcommittee. I know that, um, you know, we, he's, he's spoken a number of times. Uh, he's obviously in favor of his own project or what would be potentially his project. And I, I, I think that he'd be able to uh, we'd allow him to um, speak to some of the validity that you have, um, that you're vouching for him as well, if that's good. But we're going to adjourn this meeting. We're at uh, two hours on the zoning meeting. Thank you. Motion to adjourn.